Hello again, my name is John and this is the second part of my tutorial on audio integration and sound design with Audio Kinetic Wise to Unity Game Engine. I'm working on the 3D Beginner Complete project available on the Unity Asset Store. In the second video we will create an ambient soundscape for our game. I want to achieve a certain level of randomization in our ambient soundscape, so rather than looping the same audio file over and over again, I will define a variety of sounds that will randomly pop in different times. Let's get into it. I'll start by importing the sound effects for the ambience. Let's have a listen to these to see what are we dealing with. First, the basis of ambience. It's a couple of drone sounds intertwined with each other. The game will also have a music in the end, so I might have to lower the volume for the basses later on, or cut out some of the low frequencies. I have some dogs barking in the distance. These are the dogs just outside my window that I recorded from a distance. I have some stringy, eerie instrument effects. I have owls and a raven that already delayed and reverbed to feel distant. I want to scatter these sounds on top of the bass's drone sound to be triggered randomly at different times. So even the drone sound will be looping, these additional momentary sounds will break the sense of repetition and also create a sonically rich background ambience for the game. Let's start by putting these in their own random containers first. I'm putting each random container to a parent sequence container and adding a wise silence with a duration of 30 seconds that will be randomized between 15 to 45 seconds in each reoccurrence. I'm switching the play mode from step to continuous because I want the next element in the playlist to be played directly after the first one and make the whole playlist a loop. Now for the actual playlist, I want to play a randomly selected sound from the batch of dog sounds first and then play the silence. One last thing is I also want to have an initial delay before the dog sound because otherwise we will hear it at the very beginning and I don't want that. I rather have a 10 second delay that will be randomized each time between minus 10 seconds and plus 10 seconds. This means that the barking sound can play somewhere between 0 or 20 seconds. Let's test it out. When I press play, we have the initial delay first. Couple of seconds later, randomly selected dog barking sound is played. And then a silence is played, which will have a random duration each time between 15 to 45 seconds. As you see, what we set up here makes sure that this dog sound will be triggered on a different place in time over the basis loop that we have. Once we do the same thing for all the other three incidental sounds, our ambience track will have a random twist each time it loops. I'm applying the exact same procedures to other three sound effects. Now, finally, I want to put all these ambience related sound effects to a blend container so that they can be played on top of each other once the event is triggered. Let's listen to the whole thing. Drones start looping in the back. We hear an instrument effect. A raven is triggered now. And after a certain silence, we hear an all. Long silence follows, and then we hear an instrument effect triggered at the same time with a dog sound. If I play this one more time, all of these sounds will be played on different times. So that's what we wanted. One more thing is I want to mix the volume levels of these sounds. And although I can go to the individual containers and level them one by one, 
it is more convenient to use the mixer window view. Here I can create custom mixing sessions for the sounds that I want. I will create a new mixing session named Ambient. Drag and drop the sounds that we have for the ambient soundscape. I'm also adding the master audio bus just to see if the levels are too high or low. This little button on the top is Capture and it allows me to see which sounds are triggered at the moment. When I play the whole plant container, the orange headphone indicates the sound that is playing. I will cut out lower frequencies from the drone sound because I don't want a high energy low frequency sound to buff up my mix. That raven sound was a bit on the front, I'm lowering its volume. Same with the instrument as well as we hear. I want the whole arrangement to blend as homogeneously as possible. Don't want anything to be sticking out sharply and distract the gameplay. Okay, the last instrument was at a good level. All is good too. I like the raven and the dog as well. Let's go ahead and create a play event for the ambient sound. I also have another SFX for the beginning of the game. Let's cut down the volume a bit and create an event for this one too. Now I'm going to create a sound bank for the ambient sounds, put these two events in there and generate it before switching to Unity. To play these in our game engine, I will create an empty object for these two events. First I load up the ambient sound bank here, and then the ambient event and game start event. Let's try it in the game. Sounds nice, but one thing I noticed is the ambient event starts to play and a second later the game start event kicks in. Let me switch back to Wise and add a couple of seconds of fade in to the ambient event so that the first thing we hear is the game start event and then the ambient smoothly fades in. Here on the event editor we can define a fade in for that particular event. Generate one more time and let's try again. Great, we have the game start effect first and then the ambient kicks in. Now I'm going to integrate the sounds for the bedroom at the beginning of the level. I also want to define a reverb for the footsteps when the player enters the bedroom. Let's import these two sounds. The first one is a running water because a ghost is showering in there seamlessly. I also want this ghost to whistle Casper the friendly ghost team while he's in the shower. As a joke, but also it will convey an audio information to the player that this enemy is not hostile at the moment, because I kinda realized when I first played the game without any sound, that it is unclear whether you can get caught by this enemy or not. 
so a showering ghost who is whistling the Casper the Friendly Ghost theme might serve that purpose too. I'll start by making these a loop. For the bathroom reverb bus, I'm starting by adding a new auxiliary bus as a child of master audio bus. I'm going to name this bathroom reverb. Go to the effects tab and in the wise reverb option there is small room reverb. I select that one. To fine tune it, I'm going to send our footstep sounds to this auxiliary channel and hear how it sounds. I go to the property editor of footstep sounds and in the auxiliary bus window, click the three dots and select our bathroom reverb. Right now, it sounds like a bigger space than a small bathroom. Let's open up the bathroom reverb property editor. Go to the effects tab and click the edit to tweak it in detail. I will add a little bit surround delay. I want to shorten the decay time because bathroom reverb is generally speaking have a short but loud tail because of the tiles in the room. I will decrease the room size as well. There should be less diffusion and I want to decrease the density as well. Let's even shorten the decay time a little bit more. I think this will do. Finally, let's clear this aux channel from the footstep, because we want it to be activated once the player gets in the bathroom and deactivated when it gets out. I will though send the water and whistle sounds to reverb channel because they will always be playing in the bathroom. Now another thing is I had to define an attenuation for almost all the sounds that will be attached to different game objects in the map. These would be the objects that emit sound, like the shower or the sound of enemies. We want them to be audible when the player is close to them and fade away as we put distance in between those objects and the player. In the project explorer I go to share set step. Under the attenuations define a new attenuation called distance. Double clicking it opens its properties. This red line shows the volume to distance trajectory. As the distance increases, the volume gets slower. From the menu below, I'll add a low pass filter, which the cutoff frequency gets lower and lower as the player moves away from the target. I also have to decrease this max distance from 100 to 10. Actually, let's make it 12. The map is pretty small. Now we close the attenuator editor and add this newly defined attenuator to shower underscore loop sound effect by going to the position tab in the property editor and selecting distance. Let's try how it reacts to the player getting close and far. I want a certain low pass filter already cutting the very high frequencies even at the closest state. Let's also add another point for the later half of the attenuation. I'll add the same attenuator to whistle too. Ok, seems to be working properly. I'll make a slight volume adjustment and I'm creating play vents for the shower and whistle sounds. Go to the sound banks tab and create a new sound bank for the environment sounds. Add the shower and water events into it and generate. 
Now we can switch to Unity to make the adjustments there. Before when I was setting up footstep sounds, I already created a game object that covers the bathroom. I can just use that same game object to attach the bathroom reverb auxiliary bus to it. From the Y speaker, I open up the auxiliary buses and select the bathroom reverb, drag it as a component, and it creates an AK environment script, which will take care of anytime the player enters this game object, all the sounds will go through this auxiliary bus and be reverbed. For the whistle and water running sounds, I'll drag those from the events folder and drop it to the bat tube game object. I also have to drag the environment sound bank, otherwise the sounds in this sound bank won't play because it's not loaded when the game starts. This should do it. As the player gets close to the bathroom door, we start to hear the whistle and water running. And once we enter the room, the tile footstep sounds are reworked. Lastly, let's implement the enemy sound. I have a couple of exclamation sounds that I recorded both for gargoyles and ghosts. For the ghosts, I recorded this very generic, almost comedic ooh sound and manipulated it in vocal synth, edit reverbs and such. For the gargoyles, I just recorded a huh type of sound and layered it with grinding stone type of texture because it's kinda like a stone statue that looks around to catch the player. In Wise, I'll just put all the variations for these sounds in a random container, define the attenuation to it just as we did before, create events, put it in an enemy's sound bank and generate. And in Unity, just like we did in the previous video, add a call event to their respective animations, and that should do it. Let's try it one last time to see how it all fits together. All good. Thank you again for watching. In the next video, I'll dial into the domain of interactive music and also make the final adjustments in terms of mixing.